entire series, like, and, and uh, that even sounds strange, you know, coming out of my mouth, you know, I've got to admit, like, I didn't, I didn't, you, you don't know how close I was to not actually being here tonight, like, because, I don't know, those of you who know me and have heard me speak before, you've heard me talk about my, 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 my battle with post-traumatic fishing disorder, and uh, <laughs> having one of those fathers that, like, would get you up at 4.30 every morning throughout your entire childhood, leading into, you know, teenage, you know, where, you know, he'd yank you out of bed at 4.30 and you'd go stare at a bobber for four hours, you know, and so I'm still trying to get over that, right? And so in my attempts to try and get over that, um, the guy that this book is actually um, uh, is, uh, is, uh, dedicated to, like that Frank Carlton, um, he actually talked me into going to Alaska to go fishing. Like, so I've been going up there for the last couple of years. I go once one week out of the year and bring back about 50 pounds of salmon for Judy, which is why I get to go back the next year. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I'm up there, and the river where I, I fish is the Kittitock River above Quinnahack. And it's near Kodiak, which you might recognize because they're famous for some very large, very animals. Like, and so I'm up there, like, and um, you know, the, 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 the guy that's taking me down to this you know, gravel sandbar, like, and he, he gets me down there, like, and it's about 100 yards long. Like, and he says, well, why don't you go down to the end on the tailings down there? fish that, like that, and he said, the water's about three or four feet deep going over the bank, like that, and there's another creek coming in, and you can fish the tailings off of that, and then we'll come back down, like that, we'll pick you up in the fish, because you'll have fish by that time. Because it's not really fishing in Alaska, it's just catching, is what it really is. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm marching down through there with my waders on, my little 10 weight rod, like that, and I get down at the end of the tailings there, and I look over, and there's a big boulder, you know, in the water, like that, and so I thought, I'll just climb up on that boulder, you know, and then I'll have some height advantage, you know, like in the backlash, you know, like other people get some really good long casts and, you know, get some fish. Like that. So I start wading down into the water. And as I'm wading down into the water, the boulder rolls over and stands up. <laughs> yes. I have never seen anything that big before in my life. And certainly nothing that big with teeth, okay? And, and I'm standing in like about three feet of water. Like what it was is like you know, most of these big, you know, these big grizzlies, like one of the biggest problems is trying to stay cool. And they had an inordinately hot summer up there this summer. And so, you know, they're, they're with that coat on, like that, they're always trying to stay cool. So he was just laying in there, you know, half asleep, you know, in the water trying to stay cool. Like I mean, now he's standing in that three foot of water and he is still like about 10 feet taller than me. And I swear he was no further away from me than like that back wall all the way back there. No more than that. So like maybe about three pounds and he was going to be on me. And so I'm standing there looking at him. Like, I just wanted to tell you guys this story because I wanted you to know that my last thoughts were of you. Okay? <laughs> because the last thoughts that I had, you know, before I probably was going to get drugged into the water and eaten and, you know, marinated before I was going to get eaten, was um, I've got three more chapters in an epilogue that go on that I'm working on. <laughs> and Judy doesn't know how it ends. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, that, that was the last thought that I had. Okay. And then the guys that were in the boat up there, you know, they started making some noise as they were working their way down. And uh, then they saw you know, what was going on down there. And most certainly they could see this bear. And so they started honking these like air horns that they had, you know, and came running down near the same bar there. Okay. And the bear just looks at me and goes, <clears throat> And I was like, absolutely, you bet. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. There's no disagreement here whatsoever. And so they came around and down there and turns around, like at barrels, you know, up the, you know, the side of the bank, like at, it cuts through the trees, like at off he went. Like at, you know, it was kind of touch and go there for a little bit. Like at, the Inuit you know, uh, guy that, you know, that, that, that guides me a lot up there got down there and he goes, wow, that's the closest I've ever seen to any of them that big. And I was like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Next time I'm taking the bear spray with me, I'll tell you that much. Right? Which is really kind of useless because they always tell you it just waits on the bears like four feet away before you spray. I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Like, uh, anyway, my Inuit buddy, I always laugh about it because um, you know the Inuits, you know, famously have um, supposedly like about 50 different words for snow um, because it's such a part, you know, of their culture. Like that. And uh, he was asking me like at one time at dinner, like that. He said, Well, do you Wyomingans have anything? have, you know, 50 words for, or 50 names for, and I said, yeah, wind. We have 50 different names for the wind, and not all of them can you use in polite society, either, you know, um, but it kind of reminded me, you know, of how it is that I started this particular book, like, 